If you're someone who is flying digital FPV, such as Sharkbite or DJI, and you have GPS on your FPV quad, this device should be something you consider getting. Specifically, if you're flying the Vista or any of the Sharkbite ear units, this will prevent them overheating before taking off. Now, this is the Vifly GPS Mate. It's a small box that allows you to power your aircraft's GPS unit without actually connecting up the flight battery. This means you are not wasting valuable milliamp hours and you are not allowing your aircraft to cook itself while sitting on the ground. What we're going to do today is walk you guys through the device itself, show you actually how it works and how to connect it up, and then at the end we'll take it for a quick fly and then I'll give you my thoughts. So the first thing we're going to do is take a closer look at the GPS Mate itself. Now moving over to the overhead, what you can see when you get it, you get this little box, which is an external power module for GPS. Opening it up, inside you will find the device itself in a little bubble wrap bag, and that is it there. We have some cables in a bag too, and we have some instructions as well as a little thank you card from Vifly as well, and the instructions on what it does and how it works. Now, this device, as I said, is designed to power your GPS independently from the flight battery. As a result, it has a very small LiPo located on the back, which is a 3.7 volt LiPo, and that has a capacity of 50 milliamp hour. Now, the whole device itself weighs just 3.5 grams, and it is 26 by 20 by 8 mil in total size. Not only, though, does it allow you to actually power your GPS, it also has a model lost alarm on it as well, which you can configure, and you can see the little speaker for that located down there. Now, connecting this on the drone is really straightforward. What we've got is some pads on the bottom you can see, as well as some connectors on the top, so you can solder it either way you want, depending on what your setup is. So for instance, you've got your GPS wiring on this side, which has the TXRX ground, SC and SD, if you've got GPS and the compass. And then on the flight controller side, you've got the opposite exactly the same. And again, the idea is to allow you to actually wire this between your flight controller and the GPS unit. Now, you can also see that there's an extra pin on this side for buzzer if we want to wire it that side as well, and we'll have a look at that in a second. On the device then, we also have a switch on this side here and a button on the top, and this is how you actually power on and control the device. Now, also included with it, you can see that there's actually a set of instructions which tell you how it works, and they simply say, held the power button for more than one second if no quad battery is connected, and then it will shut down automatically after 30 minutes. So what they mean by that is, this will power your GPS for up to 30 minutes before you connect the flight battery. And to do that, we simply press the button on the top, press and hold, and you can hear it's come on, and then it's powered up, and then that is actually powering the output for the GPS there. To turn off the unit, you simply press the power button for more than one second, and then that will turn it off. Now, the nice thing on this is it shows you that you don't actually need to turn it off when you fly. The way it actually works is, when you connect your power battery to the quad, it will simply power this unit, and begin to charge the battery for you, and then pass power through to the GPS for you as well. Again, the idea of it is to allow you to get that lock without wasting your main GPS battery. There's also a switch on the unit as well, which we've got over here, which allows you to select between 3.3 volt and 5 volt, depending on what your system uh, voltage is for your GPS. So you can see that there's a little voltage indicator there. there. If we spin it over, it's hard to actually see, but it does actually say down in there 3.3 or 5 volt. It has an input voltage of 4.5 to 5.5 volt because remember it's going to be powered from the GPS power port on your flight controller and it will actually power the buzzer for up to four hours as well. So the next thing for me to do now is actually wire this into my aircraft. Now when you open the bag they actually give you some harnesses already. So you've got one here with a pin out on as well as some solder connections and we've got one here that you can self pin ready for whatever GPS you've got. Now on my aircraft that I'm going to attach it to today 
This is the May Texas, and it's already got a wired harness plug in there. So what I'm going to do is actually have a look at redoing that, and then we'll plug this in. We're probably going to mount it in the frame somewhere underneath where I can get to it, and then we're going to get it plugged in and ready to go and see how it actually performs. Okay, so all mounted in, we've got the GPS back in place, the wires underneath, and just to show you guys, it is located just under the frame down there. Sorry, Sony autofocus, not doing what I want it to do. There you go, you can see it just there. So what I can do is press the button to turn it on, and then you can see the GPS has fired up, and you can see the device itself is fired up as well. And then when I plug in the main battery, that'll start to power it. So the next job is to get it out in the field. Okay, so as you can see on power up, we have 13 or 14 satellites as it goes to ready to go. So again, the real big benefit of this device is that you have no waiting on the ground for the GPS to get lock. As soon as you've let it do its thing for a couple of minutes, you can put your flight battery on, power it up, and you're ready to get in the air straight away without wasting any time. And this is extremely important on aircraft like this, which is the HD Zero system, where you don't want it to be overheating on the ground waiting to actually get going. You also have the advantage of when you want to swap the battery, it remains powered up and you can then simply swap the pack, fly it out, ready to go without again waiting for that GPS lock or even losing the lock between flights. The unit does also have that model lost alarm or beacon feature built in. You can wire this to the flight controller to trigger via a switch, but if you leave it long enough, it will trigger automatically. So if you were to come down after a period of time, it will start beeping to say, hey, I'm over here. Okay, so to give you my thoughts on the GPS mate from Vifly, frankly, I think it is a must have device, especially if you're running a digital FPV system like I've got here. Regardless if it's HD0 or DJI, you do not want those systems to overheat on the ground. On the DJI side, it will prevent you from recording on the Vista, and on the HD0 side, whilst you do have the low power modes and even pit mode, you should really attempt to get these systems in the air as quickly as possible to prevent the ear units or VTXs overheating. The nice thing with this device is it allows you to simply power the GPS up, let it do its thing for a few minutes, and then as soon as you're ready to fly, push in your flight pack and off you go. It also has that nice additional feature as well of having the beeper or the model lost alarm on board. You can wire it into your flight controller if you want to, to control it manually, but it will kick in and beep manually if you leave the device on as well. And that means if you were to crash and your battery was to get thrown, you would still have the device beeping. It isn't the loudest of beeps on the GPS mate, but Vifly do make some other devices like this here, which is their Finder 2, which is a much louder beeping version of the device. And whilst it doesn't have the GPS power, it does have a built-in battery allowing you to power the device separately. I have basically fitted these on all of my other quads because I almost lost the other one the other day with the DJ Action 2 fitted because it crashed with a LiPo failure and it went flat and the main beeper on the motor motors died as well. So regardless if you're looking to get GPS and beep or just having beeping, Vifly do have some really nice little modules that just help you to get your device back should you have a problem, but also just make operating them a little bit easier as well.
If you're interested in getting yourself a set of these, I will put a link to Wi-Fi's website in the description of this video as well. You can check it out and you can order them. I do highly recommend the GPS, mate, if you're going to be running GPS, but if not, highly consider getting yourself one of the Wi-Fi Finder 2s because, again, it's a really good device and I wouldn't have spent nearly an hour the other day trying to find my cord if I had one of these fitted beforehand. I am going to do a separate video on this a little bit later on just to show you that as well if you haven't seen it and we'll talk about that one when that one is available. Overall, that's it from me. If you're interested in getting one, please do check out the links in the description. If you'd like to support the channel, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and please do check out our Patreon account as well as our Buy Me A Coffee account. It is only by you guys using them am I able to keep buying products like this here to allow me to talk about and share the information with you guys. Finally, I also have my own Discord server, so please check that out too. There'll be a link to that in the comment section of that video. And if you've got any questions, come over there, say hello, and I'll try and answer whatever ones you may have.